Hi all. This is just a quick and dirty video to demonstrate some interior restoration uh, techniques. This is Tweedy. Tweedy's going to Belize with us. Tweedy is an old truck. Tweedy's in 1988. Uh, we're leaving the body alone. It doesn't really have any rust, but it's ugly, and that's just fine. But we like to have a fairly nice interior to ride in, so um, I'm putting the interior together and freshening it up a little bit. The specific project that I'm on currently is taking old and faded interior ABS plastic pieces, bringing them back to the original color, fixing cracks, and restoring surfaces and texture in some cases. Uh, the first thing I want to do, and I should mention by the way, what I'm going to show is largely applicable to almost any vehicle, but there will be hopefully some details to these specific uh, body trucks which would be 1987 through 1990. The color of the interior on this vehicle is medium blue, and oddly the uh, paint actually, or not the paint, it's molded plastic, it's ABS plastic, but it actually tends to fade darker over time, which is kind of strange, and I don't know if you can see it, but we've color treated with dye here, and this is the original, <laughs> and it's actually faded darker because this is the correct blue. This is color matched to the VIN number. So uh, this is a piece that we've completely treated with, with dye and at a glance it looks like a new piece because we're not making a show truck we haven't addressed any of the scuffs and scratches so you can see where but it all looks one color whereas there was a lot of variation due to sun discoloration etc in various places so let me set this aside what I want to focus on today is probably the hardest part which is the door panels and we are about to in this video dye the door panel but I want to explain some of the process and I want to explain the uh, products that we need to use so first off one of my big challenges with this door panel was that I had a big a big crack right here and you still see the crack and I'm gonna leave it again because I'm not making a show truck but it's gonna look much nicer and more importantly it's gonna have structural integrity so we already have it patched but I'm gonna show you what I did and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do further to improve this patch the durability of this patch as I mentioned before this is ABS plastic and this is true of most interior hard plastic parts in vehicles even up to current day. They, I think, are starting to go away from ABS plastic, but it shows up quite a bit still to this day. So ABS cement is designed for ABS pipes which we don't have much of in the United States, but you can still buy the, the uh, cement for it. And ABS cement will bond uh, and actually build plastic on any ABS parts. So although this is designed essentially as a, a the ABS equivalent to PVC cement for PVC pipes, which we see a lot of in the US, this will work for any ABS plastic including interior door panels. So this is the back side of my crack. What I've done is very gradually over time layered up layer upon layer of ABS cement. It bonds to this. It essentially becomes one one piece of ABS and this is roughly the same thickness as the original door panel here making it one piece right solid through the crack and I had to be careful not to have any bleed through on my first couple of applications I had to clean a little off the front quick before it became uh, cured but 
I have now effectively patched this and I'm going to give it another couple days to cure and then my last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a piece of fiberglass over that has been soaked and squeegeed out uh, this ABS cement and what that'll do is it'll actually give some extra structure back here. Another thing that breaks on these particular door panels is these corner uh, this corner bolt hole right here and it tends to just break off and uh, it's a problem. So I had the original piece and I was able to set it in place and build this plastic all up around it and all it is is ABS cement. So whereas these door, this door panel was quite ragged originally, now it's structurally sound again. Another little trick, if you have metal grills, speaker grills like this one does, often they come loose at their attachment points and they buzz. And these, this one does not buzz. This was actually done years ago, but it still works. If you press some ABS plastic or ABS cement through the metal grill where it overhangs on the backside where it can't be seen and get it to bond on the back side there what you've done is you've created a piece of plastic that merges up through the metal grill and the grill can't vibrate so when you play bass notes it doesn't buzz your grill so that's the value of this ABS cement and it's fairly critical to my uh, kind of moderate restoration that I'm doing to the store panel. I've masked my weather stripping and my lock bezel here. If you're really doing a high-end restoration you might want to remove these. It is possible to remove them. There's metal tabs on the back of the lock bezel and you have uh, metal tabs here. Some vehicles have heavy staples, but you can bend that and remove this stuff. For me, I didn't think it was that critical because, again, I'm looking for a nice result, not a show vehicle result. The cushioned armrest is a bit malformed and it's not in horrible shape other than that, but it's going. Also, the vinyl fabric, vinyl dye that we are gonna use to get this back to the original color is a good moderate wear type surface finish, but it doesn't deal good with high wear, which an armrest might see. So we're gonna wrap this with cloth I'm just telling you about that now. I'm not going to actually get that in this video, but uh, the process will involve me super gluing some of these parts down so that we recover most of our correct shape and then wrapping this. Trim pieces have been removed from this and this, is, this door panel goes together a lot like a lot of door panels all the way back into, I would say, the late 70s and up through early 90s at least. But this is uh, an insert that fits here in the door and it's upholstered and in this case it attaches via these metal tabs. It's actually a, a sheet metal stamped metal backer with tabs popped up and the tabs correspond to the holes you see on the back of the door and you bend them over to hold them in place. So in order to remove this, you find them in bent position and you straighten them up the way that you see this here, and then it comes right out. This chrome trim, you see less and less of this as you get into the 90s for sure, but this chrome trim was the same way. All of these had to be straightened up and then it came right off the door to, put it, to reattach it. It's just the opposite process, you fold them down. With all of that stuff removed, then, I was able to clean and do a pretty good deep cleaning of the door. I had to make sure that I had all trash and debris out of these cracks. In fact, I see a little bit yet. Okay, 
that piece will not be visible. And so we won't worry about it. So with the deep cleaning done, we're basically ready to spray. But I do want to show you what we use for deep cleaning. In some cases, I might use something more extreme, but this does really well. This is Rust-Oleum Wax and Tar Remover, and it's good for uh, removing buildup of nasty stuff that uh, ends up on the surfaces. So, on to the dye process. So the product we're going to use is Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric Coating. It's a vinyl dye, and every major paint manufacturer that puts anything in aerosol makes a version of this. You can, if, if the correct color is not available at your auto parts store, you can actually talk to your person at the counter. They can usually run your VIN and order, special order, something that will be a dead match to your interior. Now in my case, O'Reilly, some O'Reilly stores carry this and it is supposedly a perfect match to the medium blue in the Fords of my ear. But the important thing is vinyl dye. So this stuff goes on, it dries incredibly quick. It gives a very nice uniform finish, uh, verging on flat, maybe just a touch of satin. And it looks like an OEM part when you're done. So with it clean, there's nothing to do but spray. stop here in just a second once I get the bottom half done and then we can talk about a few other things that are useful to know just to save time and right before we're done this should already be starting to achieve its near flat finish that we're looking for in fact I already see some of the areas that I've sprayed are getting there now so one of the last things that so what I want to show you now is this opens up lots of possibilities. You have the opportunity to modify your interior, add parts, or fabricate parts. You can build subwoofer boxes and actually dye them to the color of your interior. You can add black ABS plastic uh, gauge pods and things of this nature and dye it to the interior color. Um, and I want to show you a couple other tricks and I'm not actually going to demonstrate them, I'm going to describe them and you'll have to figure out the techniques. But specifically with sub subwoofer boxes or anything that you might fabricate that ends up in its initial state with a s smooth surface, SEM makes this clear texture coating specifically to add a textured 
uh, leather-like surface. Another trick that I have discovered is that you can vary texture with spray truck bed coating similar to this and possibly uh, more durable but you have more uh, ability to work this after you've sprayed it. So keep this in mind especially I might use this if I built a subwoofer box and I wanted to dye it afterwards and have it have kind of an OEM look but specifically the SEM texture coating, it's a little bit soft after it's been sprayed on, and it allows you to use sandpaper after the fact to kind of add some character, and then some quad zero steel wool after that to blur some of the harshness of what you've done. And between that and simply varying your distance as you coat a surface, you can come really close to actually simulating a OEM leather look hard plastic piece. Once that's done, whether you used the Rust-Oleum truck bed coating or whether you used this, which is really what the pros use, you'll have to order this, but this SEM4853 is the product you want. In either case, you go back after the fact with vinyl dye and that piece will look very much like an original equipment part and in exactly the correct color. So once this is done I'll be wrapping this with cloth. I have the original equipment cloth just a little bit. Um, I'll be putting my trim piece back in and then over the next few days I'll probably add my final layer of ABS patch with fiberglass embedded to really beef up that crack so that it has the strength it needs for years to come. And uh, at that point this door panel is going back in the truck and I'm actually recoating all of the interior plastic parts. Another advantage to doing that is that it gives some UV protection and a lot of this plastic is very old starting to get damaged by sun so this will kind of put a temporary halt to that aging process. Um, I hope that was helpful. Covered a lot of ground. The, let, me, let me recap one more time. ABS plastic cement. It's designed for pipes. It works perfectly for any kind of an ABS hard plastic interior part on a vehicle. Vinyl dye. You can get this in the exact color for your interior. Take your VIN number to your auto parts store and they can confirm whether it's correct or not or order the right thing. And then we have SEM 4853 clear texture coating for parts that you're doing custom that you'd like to have a leather look, leather grain, and then you've got the cheap shortcut truck bed liner spray can. And you can do a lot with this. Uh, these, both of these products, you're going to have to buy these and experiment, and I highly recommend you experiment and get your techniques figured out before you go after it, but you can get great techniques this way. So that's it. Good luck.